And now below this one, I'll make sure I back that up there. Below this one here, we're going to add the control. This will be a bit more advanced, but what we're going to do inside of this is create a new instance of a class, and that class is WordPress Customize Color Control. Now that is a class that the options panel already has made for us, and there's a few different ones we can use. This is going to bring up the jQuery color picker for us and allow it to submit the values based on the color chosen in that picker. Add the other parentheses there, and we're going to make sure we close that one right there. I want to add a space there so we can see the difference between these parentheses. Uh, you can space all these out if you are that way. That is up to you. And make it look like that. Um, whatever you want to do. I'm going to add a space there though. Inside of this class we have to pass one more thing. We have to pass the WordPress customize variable. So make sure you do not forget that. Now inside of this we have to set up a label. And we're going to localize this label. So we're going to do the two underscores. And inside this, we're going to give it the label of, I don't know, edit background color. And then the theme is game square, just like before. Now we're going to set it to a specific section. The section will be the game square colors. And now we have to set this controller to a specific settings. And the settings is going to be background color. So that should be it for our first setting, our first controller, all within our first section. Now there's a huge chance of when I hit control S and view this, we'll have some PHP errors. But we'll see if that ha oh, there we go, no PHP errors. Awesome, there we go, we have a colors section tab. We click on that and now we have a select background color picker here. And you see when that happens though, that the color isn't actually modifying the background color because it's not magic. The point is though is that it is here, it is working. Now all we have to do is use the output value and make it do something. Now just to show you, we can do this and, ex and extend this a bit just by copying that, pasting it right there, and giving it, uh, let's see, this is under the background color setting, so we'll, we'll, make, it a, we'll make a new setting under color and give it the hmm let's see link color just like we had in the part zero right before this video so this will be a part of link color just like that but it's all a part of the game square colors section hit control s hit f5 to refresh but we didn't change the description so let's go back here and change this to edit link color now if we refresh, we will have the edit background color and the edit link color. Now we can actually change the default of this setting to like 4B, 4B, 4B or whatever it is. And you'll see that it actually changes the color. That's not just a blank area there. That's actually the color that changes along with that. So th that will show the default because the color will be right there. So now let's actually take this information and use it to modify our theme. To do that, we're going to go outside that function and create a new function. And I'm going to call it awful media. Oh, I keep doing that, awful media. Game square. Uh, I don't know. CSS customizer. Customizer CSS. And eh, whatever. And now inside of this function, we're going to actually close the PHP off and open a new PHP tag there. So we have PHP below that for the rest of the stuff. But inside this, we're going to have a style tag. We're going to be outputting some HTML here. Add a type here to uh, show that it is a text containing CSS. Now inside of this, we're just going to write out some CSS like we normally would. It would be body, and then inside the body we would change the background color. Just like that. So that's how we'd write CSS normally if we were doing it in line or uh, on the same page inside the style tags here. And the background color just be FFF, right? But we want to actually use the information that we sent to the database. And to do that, we'll have to replace FFF with a little bit of a PHP snippet. So we're going to say PHP. 
Now, now notice I am for the color. I have left the pound sign here, the little number sign. I have left that there, so that because it's, all it's going to bring in is the numbers. It's not going to have the symbol. So leave the symbol there for colors. We're going to echo get theme mod. So get theme mod is going to extract the information from a field that we set up in our customizer in the function right above this. And that field is the background color. Whatever this function grabs from the background color right there from that field, whatever it grabs from that, it will echo that out right there for us. Now all we have to do is fire this function off and we should be good to go with the background color. So we're going to actually use this function whenever the you should have this let's go to our directory here and in our header we should have the WordPress head function below below our style sheets and this isn't done well we need to actually do that a bit better but uh, that's yeah anyway make sure you call the WordPress head function below your CSS and your JavaScript and stuff where you'll have some conflict issues and you don't want that so we're going to target the WordPress head function and then we're going to call this function whenever that function is activated so now I hit control s let's go to our customizer refresh the page encountered an error that's good what did I do oh okay I bet it's uh, we didn't close that off there so close that we refresh and there we go it did not completely break go back to customize and now we have colors background color let's change the background color and hope it does something yeah look at that that is awesome now, that's how you change the background color the same thing applies to other colors <laughs> anything like that in CSS you want to do the same the same thing applies now you can do this with any form you could do radio buttons you could do select menus you could do uh, text fields things like that and still get the same CSS output uh, just depending just different input so that's how you can do those kind of things but I'm not just gonna leave you out there and say that's how you do that I'm gonna actually walk you through a couple different things show you how that's done and show you how the images are done and uh, we'll do that so let's do our link colors now we're going to take this and copy it paste that right there and let's target the um, links let's see how we styled our links exactly I want to look at it like that Drag it over here. How do we target them? Main nav A. Could that be cool if we could add some customization to these? That'll be a bit. That, that's kind of an advanced thing. So let's do that because we we'll have to change a few different things to make it work. So we we'll have to add in uh, the link styles, the normal state link styles. Add in background changes and color changes to that. We can change the hover, and we could change the drop down link styles. So that would be a cool thing we could do for this video to show you how to do that. So let's do that. So we're going to target the main nav anchor tag. Shut up train. 